we had seven divers, um, a combination of IMAS divers and Reef Life Survey divers. We went out for about three and a half hours, at about the two hour mark. Uh, we all kind of were looking at each other going, well, I don't know, <laughs> it's not looking promising. Um, and so I kind of signalled to my buddy and said, oh, I'm going to start um, heading back in slowly. I you know, was half-heartedly flicking, flicking algae around and lo and behold, <laughs> I found a red handfish. Uh, so that was very exciting. Um, so once obviously, once we'd found that first one, we signalled to the other divers that, that we had a sighting, um, which then meant we could focus our search area to that, that same spot. Uh, and sure enough, in that, you know, in a small 50 metre, maybe by 20 metre area, we um, discovered another eight fish. So, yeah, very exciting. Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be close to the rarest fish in the world, especially when we thought it was that one population. So the second population is just a huge relief. It effectively doubles how many we think there are left on the planet, but it also gives us hope that there may be, may be other populations out there. We learned a lot from finding this second population because the habitat wasn't identical to the where we found the first population, so where the first population is known from. We can take some heart in knowing that they're, they're not as critically dependent on that particular habitat, but perhaps because both populations are so small, uh, it's an indication that they're, they're very much sociable animals and because they have to walk to disperse, uh, it, it means that location-based management is actually a good, a good option and uh, I think both these populations have different ways that they could be managed.